Okay, so I got my Park Tools HCW-5 spanner tool. Cost about $15 shipped off Amazon, but it is a nice looking tool. Uh, I guess it's a stainless steel, kind of brushed finish, decently weighted. Anyway, let's hope it works. That's the important part. Okay, that seems pretty tight. I'm giving it a lot of force and not getting any motion. I'll let that sit about five, 10 minutes, see if I can get it. And I have a feeling I'll probably be getting the hammer out and giving it some hammers. I'm just working on a bike. Are you going to make a new bike? Yep. All right, once again, we have another tool. I need another tool that I don't have. So let's see if I can come up with something to get it off. Wow, that even worked way better than I thought. It, it even took the paint off and went through the, some of the primer all the way down to the steel and I was just barely pressing with that knife. I think I'm actually gonna put the frame back on the bike stand. It might be easier to do this. And just go through the whole thing and get all these decals off, just like this. I might even just use my knife that worked pretty good. So I just got off amazon.com and the spanner for this, I think they're 29 millimeters between centers. It was like 20 bucks or something, so I'm gonna actually, that's kind of expensive, so I'm actually gonna try to make one out of this uh, scrap aluminum that I had sitting around. That was actually really loose. Probably might not have even need the, needed this tool, but hey, it worked. Hey there, well, I'm doing the boring work of sanding right now, so there's not a lot that I wanna show you, but there is one thing. I've noticed there's quite a bit of like rust on the frame and you, and you didn't notice it when the bike was painted but you see these like little lines right here the bike is kind of covered in these little lines and what they are is like little wrinkles in the paint and underneath the wrinkles there's just like a little bit of rust so basically i'm seeing that unfortunately all over the frame let me uh, zoom you in on some of that little rust sections that's a pretty good example you can kind of see it there now a lot of it is gone because i have been attempting to remove it all but you can see it right there it's pretty unfortunate because there's no way that I'm gonna get all of that it's a little bit hard to see but anyway you get the idea so this is kind of the status where we're at now one thing I wanted to tell you guys about was the Shanran miles bike computer and I was gonna do just a regular review on it um, but by the time I actually got it every single other youtuber already cycling channel YouTube or whatever already did a video on it so I was like, what else can I say? Everybody basically liked it. I liked it, I've used it for months. So I decided to do a torture test actually. And that ended up being kind of a bad idea. But anyway, um, I dipped it in, I left it in some standing water 
uh, for like 45 minutes or something like that. No problem. And it, it is rated to uh, IP something six. I forget what it's called. Anyway, it's supposed to be able to stay underwater for a bit, like uh, three, you know, two meters, something like that. So I, I just kind of left it under the water for 45 minutes and had no problem with that. My mistake was when I started trying to just, you know, flood it with the hose. So I stuck it by the hose. This is real stupid. I don't even like telling you about this, but I had it, the hose just blasting on it. And at first it worked okay. But then later it started glitching out. It turned out water did get into it. But before it started glitching out, I thought I'd give it a drop test. So I was dropping it from my like chest height. I got 11 drops in when I cracked the LCD screen. Now to be fair, they actually do send a uh, case with it, like a silicone or whatever um, case that you can put around it. And I'm pretty sure it would never would have broke under those circumstances that I was using it. But nevertheless, I didn't use it and I was just dropping it and dropping it and dropping it. After the 11th time, after the 11th time, it did break uh, the LCD screen. So I thought, oh man, okay, I really screwed this up. Well, there's water getting inside. The screen is now broken. Um, what kind of story is this? So I thought, okay, let me just give a test of their customer service. So I contacted them with like a pseudo name, a different email account and everything. And I said, hey, I broke my screen. Uh, how can I get a new one if I want to fix it myself? And to my delight, they were really friendly and they said, okay, we'll send you a new one. Just pay the shipping, which was $14 um, to my house over here in the US. So it came pretty quick, week and a half, two weeks, something like that, it was here. And I did solder it in and it did work. And that I thought was gonna make a great video. Hey, it works again. But unfortunately that water intrusion did kind of screw it up. So it actually works when you plug it in, but the battery circuit doesn't work. I think the resistor right after the battery looks like it's uh, damaged from the corrosion. So I tried cleaning it up as best I could with some like alcohol and stuff, but it never uh, it was able to work again with the battery. But that said, I do appreciate the company, you know, sending me this computer is legitimately good computer. It's, it's high quality, it's, it's not junk. Um, maybe you shouldn't drop it on the ground without a case 11 times in a row and jam a hose up it. But uh, other than that, it's gonna work fine. It has a lot of great features and all that. So I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, I've been kind of agonizing on how I wanted to share this video or share that. But anyway, that's what's been going on. It's actually a good computer. Just you know, don't ridiculously abuse it and it'll work fine. Okay, I'm getting ready to paint. I've been sanding for probably two hours today. It looks pretty good. Um, like I mentioned before, there seemed to be wrinkles in the paint and where the wrinkles were, there was rust underneath. And with just some sandpaper, I don't feel like going through this whole thing and getting every single speck of rust, but I think I did pretty good. I hope I did good enough. And uh, this is what we're gonna go with anyway. This is the condition that we have before the paint. I really would prefer not to take off that much paint. I believe that you actually wanna leave as much paint on as possible because that'll work kind of like a primer itself. Usually the factory paint's gonna be on there better than the spray stuff you'll get at the store, at least that's what I believe. Better than you'll be able to apply that. So uh, I like to leave the paint on. I only took this much off is because I kept finding quite a bit of rust everywhere. So kind of forced me to take off more than I would have preferred. And I spent a lot more time painting than, or excuse me, sanding, than I really like to spend. But nevertheless, it's, uh, it's ready to go. I'm just gonna shake this can up. Ended up getting this, uh, what's it called? Colonial Red. So it's kind of like a dark red, similar to the color it already is. I think that'll look pretty good. I think I should be able to do it in just one can. My Mia Tata, I did it with just one can. So I'm getting the camera nice and far back. I just got this brand new lens. So I don't really want to get any paint on it. So I'm taking it all the way back and zooming in. All right, it's a good 10 feet away, at least 12 feet away. All right, let's see how it goes. This is the big moment. Most of it is going on super glossy and nice, but I'm seeing some weird things I don't like on some of these rust spots actually, and I thought I got completely. I did also, of course, go over the whole thing with alcohol. First I cleaned it with water real good, then I went over it with, with some rubbing alcohol. 
So I was hoping that everything is clean and nice. I'm a little bit concerned about those spots I just saw though, but let's keep going. This is just gonna be a light first coat. Oh shoot, I was supposed to put my respirator on. Somebody, one of you guys in the comments told me that not only the 2K paint, but I should also be wearing a respirator for all spray paint, so. All right, nice and safe. You guys probably can't hardly hear me now. Oh no, eh, that doesn't look great. I have runs. Oh my gosh, I've never had runs before, but. There we go. Every time it's a learning experience. That looks pretty bad. I think maybe I gotta take it a little easier with this paint. Have some runs in the top tube. That's not good. Very first coat is done. Uh, I'm actually not too happy with how it looks so far at all. I'm pretty surprised and disappointed. Check out those little pin pin things there. See that? Oh my gosh, what am I gonna do about that? See those little spots? I really didn't expect that. Look down here. There's like some run spots too, right there. And, and worst of all, look at this stuff going on. See that? Gosh, it's almost like there's some kind of something on the surface that I didn't get cleaned off. And uh, I think I'll be coming back wet sanding this. I don't like to wet sand. I wouldn't want to do that normally, but uh, this is too, <laughs> too bad not to, unfortunately. So, all right, no problem. That's gonna give me plenty of time to work on the fork too. And uh, we'll get it going. Oh, you know what we can do? Let's leave it up on, let's leave this on a more positive note. Let's go check out the parts bin. On the last video I showed you the parts bin itself, but we didn't open up any parts because I thought it was like kind of too early for that. But, you know, we've had a bit of a tough day in the paint booth just now. So let's do something fun and open up a couple or all of these parts. I've not opened them yet, so I don't even know what's inside here. Let's take a look together. All right, here's the handlebars. They should be aluminum, more or less mountain bike handlebars. All right. Okay. These are used. I don't know if I mentioned that, but these are used. I think they're used. Gosh, they look almost new, but I think I got these off eBay and I was pretty sure that looks, I don't know. I don't know if it's used or new, but it looks pretty good should fit this uh, stem that I have down here we're about to open up. They're not too big, you know, not too wide or nothing. I'm not really sure what the what the width is, but it's pretty narrow actually, which is what I wanted for this build. All right, now let's take a look at the stem. I'm kind of interested in this. This is most definitely used. I think it's even pretty old. What do you think of that? It's kind of interesting, right? I wanted to get one with a bit of a ne negative angle. I, I want to say it was like a 17 degree negative angle. I think it looks really cool. I think and I hope it's going to look cool on this bike. I thought it would look neat with these like, I don't know, with this like big nut here. And I'll try to polish it too, just to get it a little bit more shiny. But I think it's looking pretty cool. So, something a little bit different, at least I thought. That's why I went with it. All right, this isn't too interesting. This is just a, uh, what is that? 32, 32, which I think will be great on this bike. This bike is absolutely not gonna be a speed demon. Here's the 2K gloss clear coat. I already mentioned the shifter. This uh, some company gave me, uh, you can see it in one of my past videos. They're just some kind of mountain bike style pedals. I think they'll go pretty good, plus the red. So that's that. Here's a saddle I got. It's kind of a copy of, uh, I don't even know. I'm not like a road bike triathlon guy, but it's some kind of copy of some kind of specialized saddle. It was pretty inexpensive and I thought it looked good. 
Uh, here we have the crank set. It shouldn't be anything special. Other than the interesting thing is they sent me actual Chinese newspaper, but it's just the crank set. Oh wait, did they, they didn't send me a, a chain? They sent me a chain ring? I don't remember ordering a chain ring from them. Anyway, here's the crank set. It's one of these. Actually, this looks a little bit different than my other ones. And this one's for a tapered uh, spindle bottom bracket, 170 millimeter set. So that should do. I didn't think I ordered a, a crank set, uh, excuse me, chain ring. It says right here, 34 tooth. Okay, well, I have a choice then. Cool. And that's actually about it for new parts. So I'll go ahead and end that video here. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next one, hopefully very soon. Bye.